I am Mazen Judy, assistant professor in the Baghdad Medical College. By the name of God, I would like to present this lecture for the fourth year student undergraduate in the Baghdad Medical College in the oncology module. The title of the lecture is the pain management in cancer patients. Objectives of this lecture, uh, types of cancer pain, etiology of the cancer pain, management of cancer pain, assessment of cancer pain, and the treatment of cancer pain by different drugs, whether opioid, special techniques in pain management. So all these conditions, all these will be discussed uh, in this lecture. Pain can be classified into two major types, which are acute and chronic pain. Acute pain is characterized by well-defined temporal pattern of onset, generally associated with subjective and objective physical signs and with hyperactivity of the autonomic nervous system. There are numerous specific acute cancer pain syndrome associated with diagnostic and therapeutic procedures or specific anti-tumor therapies, for example, pain related to the bone marrow biopsy. Now, acute pain is further subdivided into two uh, groups, and these two groups are uh, either acute pain occurs through the several days with a pattern of symptom progression, which is called subacute pain, the other type of acute pain that episodic pain, and this episodic pain is intermittent in nature and occurs during or confined periods of time on a regular or irregular basis. While the chronic pain persists for more than three months with a less well-defined temporal onset and without the objective signs common to acute pain. Most cancer-related pain treatment in palliative care setting is for chronic pain. There is a term that is called baseline pain is the average pain intensity experience for 12 or more hours during the 24-hour period. And there is another term that is called breakthrough pain. It is a transient increase in the pain to greater than moderate intensity occurring on the top of baseline pain. Various epidemiologic studies have reported prevalence of breakthrough pain in 23 to 90% of patients with cancer. The transitory increased pain can mark the onset of or worsening of pain at the end of a dosing interval or with a regulatory scheduled analgesics. Uh, this, is, this is what's called incident pain when caused by an action of the patient, for example, walking on a leg with a pathologic fracture. Now, regarding the incidence of cancer pain, uh, with the increase of the five-year survival of the patient with cancer, the patient uh, develops further uh, types of pain and different attacks of pain. Over the past two decades, the five-year survival rate for the 15 most common cancers have increased from 43 to 64% for men and from 57 to 64% of women. And approximately 30 to 50% of people with cancer experience pain while undergoing treatment and 70 to 90% of people with advanced cancer experience pain. Actually, the pain management is an important, activity, important specialty in the oncology department, what is called palliative medicine or palliative care. And this depends on the uh, severity of the pain and management of this pain. And the goal of this specialty is how to decrease the sever of the patient from this pain. Now, there are two types of pain that can be described by a patient, whether he is uh, cancer or not cancer. Regarding the malignant disease, can give non or nociceptive pain and neuropathic pain. The somatic pain or nociceptive pain depend on nociceptors, uh, are the nerves which uh, sense and respond to parts of the body which suffer from damage. While neuropathic pain 
Cancer pain is the result of an injury or malfunction in the peripheral or central nervous system. Okay? Yes. This figure showing the different types of pain that can be described by patient of malignancy. Now, in the pain associated with the tumor, could be bone lesion that results from metastasis, like bone marrow expansion, vertebral syndrome, local infiltration of the base of the skull, for example, involvement. So when there will be infiltration, this is to the pain that patient will develop uh, pain in the, in the bone. Also, the pain may be visceral, for example, hepatic capsule uh, expansion of the, or distension of the hepatic capsule, retroperitoneal syndrome, intestinal obstruction, ureteric obstruction, all these can give rise to visceral type of pain. Uh, sometimes the neuropathic pain, neuropathic pain, what is called plexopathies, uh, could be caused by cranial neuropathies when there will be involvement of the cranial nerve, Leptomeningeal disease, inner two meninges, the arachnoid and pyometer between which circulate the cerebrospinal fluid, base of the skull, also metastasis as I said, mononeuropathies when there is a branch of the nerve may be involved, what is called mononeuropathy, polyneuropathy, multiple nerves can be involved like brachial, cervical, sacral, and Codaquina syndrome. Codaquina syndrome is the bundle of the nerves below the spinal cord can be damaged, and this the patient in this condition the patient will suffer from uh, perianal pain uh, related to the legs, and also may suffer from loss of the uh, urine and uh, fecal continence. There is a term also called paraneoplastic syndrome. Syndrome means a set of signs and symptoms. That is the consequence, uh, if it is perineoplastic, this syndrome will be consequence of cancer in the body. But unlike, but unlike mass effect, it is not due to the local presence of cancer cells. For example, osteoarthropathy that can occur in patients with non-small cell lung cancer. Okay, gynecomastia also again can occur in non-small cell lung cancer uh, or the adenocarcinoma type. Uh, sensi sensory motor neuropathy can occur in small cell lung cancer type. So, different malignancies in the body can give rise to different features, what is called paraneoplastic syndrome, but in the absence of metastasis of this malignancy. Okay? Also, radiation can give rise to the pain can be caused by enteritis or radiation fibrosis, osteoradionecrosis, myelopathy, neuropathy, brachial sacral uh, damage or sacral effect of radiation, uh, pain flare after radiopharmaceutical uh, treatment, and radiation induced cystitis. So radiation can give rise to pain as a sequelae for this uh, management. Hormonal treatment also can cause bone pain, flare, arthralgia, myalgia. Post-surgical also, after the surgery, the patient with malignancy can develop uh, acute post-operative or procedural pain, for example, phantom lip pain, post-nephrectomy, post-mastectomy, post-teracotomy, post-radical neck dissection, pelvic floor myalgia. Also, the use of certain drugs can be associated with bisphosphonate, for example, specific drug used for the uh, bone metastasis uh, also can give rise to osteonecrosis maybe associated with pain post chemotherapy also of course many chemotherapeutic agents can give rise to different types of pain whether somatic or, or neuropathic can give rise to chemotherapy to arthralgia, myalgia, avascular necrosis, chronic abdominal pain, mucositis or neuropathy Multiple cytotoxic drugs can give rise to neuropathic pain, like platinum-based products, for example, cisplatin, oxaliplatin, taxane like paclitaxel, dostaxel, vinca alkaloids like vinicristine, viniplastin. Also, exapipilone can give rise to neuropathic pain. Others like uh, linalidomide or thalidomide. Now, what is the management of of the cancer pain. 
Of course, like any other patient suffer from pain, we have to take the history from the patient, physical examination, and then we try to describe the appropriate treatment. And the patient history for the pain, as we know, Socrates feature for the pain as a site, onset, character, radiation, aggravating and relieving factors. Also, the personal response of the pain feeling of fear, confusion, hopelessness about cancer, its prognosis, and the causes of pain can affect how the patient responds and describes the pain. After taking the history from the patient, physical examination is important, general physical examination, general signs of health, and also neurological examination as uh, sensory motor, sensory reflexes, and cranial nerve examination. All of these should be, should be examined. And the pain assessment, and this pain assessment, we, ca we have many scales for the assessment of the pain, whether descriptive, verbal, neuromic, analog, Example of these are descriptive pain rating scales from no pain to worse severe pain. So the patient may develop no pain, mild, moderate, severe pain, very severe pain to worse possible pain. The other scale descriptive pain rating uh, by 10 cm descriptive pain distress scale as non pain or annoying, uncomfortable, dreadful, horrible or organizing type of pain. There is verbal pain scale also as mild, moderate, and severe pain. A neuromic pain rating scales from 0 to 10 can be like this figure and also maybe from 0 to 100 like this figure. And also there is multi-language pain assessment for example English we ask the patient, please point to the number of the best to describe your pain from 0 to 10, and the patient will refer to the severity of his pain. There is what's called one Baker phase pain rating scale, which includes six phases, phase 0 to phase 5. Phase 0 here, when there is very happy phase because uh, the patient doesn't hurt at all, while phase 1 here, hurt just a little bit of pain, while phase 2 hurt to a little more pain. Phase 3 hurts even more, phase 4 a whole, and phase 5 the patient has severe pain, although uh, the patient uh, start to cry also from the severity of the pain. Basic principles for the pain management, uh, actually there is what is called a multidisciplinary team and the team for the management of this pain it include oncologists, orthosurgeon, uh, specialists of anesthesia, radiotherapists, neurosurgeon, pharmacists, psychologists and psychiatrists. And we have what is called the WHO pain ladder which include three steps like this figure step 1, step 2, and step 3. Step 1, when there is use of non-opioid analgesics, while step 2, weak opioid analgesics are used, and step 3, there is uh, use of potent opioid analgesics. We uh, graduate or increase in the WHO pain ladder according to the severity of the pain as it is seen here from step one to step three. Okay, so what is the role of pain project team members? There is a team member, it is called project team member, and include number of uh, uh, people. These are clinical nurse specialists, clinical pharmacists, and, and physicians, researcher, and programmer, program director. Each member in the team has specific uh, role in the management. What are the drugs that are used in the management of pain in the cancer patient? The three major groups of drugs. These are the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug, non-narcotic analgesics, and narcotic analgesics. Regarding the non-opioid analgesics in the Step 1 
of WHO pain ladder. These are used for mild and moderate pain and include salicylates, which is the aspirin, or choline magnesium trisidate, and also diflunisal. While P-aminophenol derivatives, which is acetaminophen, pastamol, propionic acids also like ibuprofen, ketoprofen, naproxen, acetic acids like ketodalac or ketolac, phenomic acid like the mephenomic acid, and also COX-2 inhibitor, which is which includes celecoxib. So all these drugs are non-opioid analgesics and include mainly non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug and paracetamol. The opioid analgesics, these are endogenous opioid system, has a sensory role, pain, modulatory role, emotional role, and cognitive role. And the endogenous opioid peptides like enkephalines, endorphin, and uh, dynorphins. We have to know the types of receptors for the opioids. We have three types of receptors. These are U, K, and Sigma. Uh, with agonists for the U, which are morphine, methadone, and the endogenous opioids, endorphin. By the K, we have nab, uh, nalbufin or pentazosine, and the endogenous opioids, dynorphin. And Sigma, we have the levorphanol, as agonists and endogenous opioids, uh, encaphaline, encephaline, and these uh, all for all these the antagonist is naloxone or naltrexone. The most important and the cornerstone in the management of pain in the cancer patient is morphine. Morphine has an analgesic effect. What is the action of morphine? Morphine inhibits the ascending pain transmission of nociceptive information from the dorsal horn and activate the ascending pain inhibitory pathway in the brainstem. So this mechanism of the action of the morphine. Morphine continues to be the mainstay of opioid treatment, although its potential adverse effects can limit utility. Because many patients can't tolerate morphine without adverse effects, morphine is the most cost-efficient and practical first-line opioid choice in most situations. But morphine has limitation and can affect the body more than other drugs, whether opioids or other drugs. Why? Because there is a metabolite of the morphine, which is the active metabolite, what is called morphine 6-glucuronide. This active metabolite contributes to analgesia and may worsen adverse effects as it accumulates in patients with renal dysfunction. So, this, uh, the use of morphine, we have to control two things important. We have to be sure the renal function of the patient first, and second thing, we have to control constipation as side effect of morphine. Oxycodone is a practical alternative that does not have the same metabolite challenge and morphine of morphine and may therefore be a better choice for patients with poor hepatic or renal function. Of course, we can alternate opioids from, which, from one type to other type, but this alternating drug depends on the renal function, liver function, and general condition of the patient, and there is specific formula and specific uh, uh, use of each alternative drug like oxycodone or fentanyl and others. Uh, these are used, yani, these are uh, information for the patients, uh, for the patients and for the doctors, postgraduate rather than undergraduate uh, students. Regarding the morphine, we have long acting and short acting products are available for both morphine and also for the oxycodone. And uh, typically we have sustained release preparation is combined with as needed doses of an intermediate immediate release preparation, doses 10 to 20% of the total daily opioids. This meaning uh, the patient, for example, need uh, 20 milligram of morphine daily to control his pain. He has attacks of what? of uh, severe breakthrough pain, in this condition we can use 10 to 20% of the uh, daily dose of morphine. 
as a dose to control the breakthrough pain. Co-administration of non-opioids and adjuvant drugs as suggested by WHO ladder may help achieve optimal pain control with the least amount of constipation, sedation, and confusion. Drug use with pain medications could be antidepressant, anticonvulsant, local anesthesia, corticosteroid, bisphosphonates, and stimulants. Co-analgesic therapy for common cancer pain syndrome. For pain metastasis, soft tissue infiltration, arthritis, psoriasis, we can use oral non-steroidal non anti-inflammatory drug. We can use this drug like uh, also others, ibuprofen, naproxen, choline, magnesium, tricyclate. While post-operative pain, we can use the parenteral or internal non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug, endomethacin, for example. Acute nerve compression, in this condition, if there is acute nerve uh, compression only, but there is no severe compression and there is no acute spinal compression, we can use a limited dose, small dose of dexamethasone or methylprednisolone. While more dose can be used in condition of acute spinal cord compression when there is severe increase in tracheal pressure, also whether there is uh, a spinal cord compression or it's like, like for example, uh, breast cancer misses to the uh, uh, to the bones and there is bone uh, spinal cord compression. We can use heavy dose of dex dexamethasone as 20 milligram every six hour, or heavy dose of methylprednisolone uh, reaching to 80 milligram every six hours. In condition of neuropathic pain. We can use specific group of drugs like tricyclic antidepressant drug, like norotriptyline. Uh, also, we can use anticonvulsant drug like carbapentin. Also, we can use anti uh, spasticity drug like baclofen. Bone main metastasis, we can use the bisphosphonate like zoledronic acid. Also, we can use calcitonin. Bowel spasm from obstruction, we can use scopolamine. Octuotide. So there are there is long list of drugs uh, for the control of the pain in cancer patient. But depending on the condition of the pain, severity of the pain, and whether the pain is somatic or neuropathic. In addition to the use of drug, there is physical intervention like the use of the heat as a hot pack or heating pad, cold as a flexible ice packs. Massage can be used also, vibration. Exercise is very important to strengthen weak muscles. Uh, and also changing the position of the patient sometimes. Stimulation also by controlled low voltage electrical stimulation. Also acupuncture, acupressure. So not only drugs are used to control the pain. There is physiotherapy measures are used also to control the pain in cancer patients. Thinking and behavioral intervention also another way to control the pain, like relaxation, hypnosis, redirecting thinking, thinking patient education, psychological support. All these can be used to support the patient. So the palliative treatment for patients with cancer really started from first day of diagnosis. And this palliative treatment for the patient himself and also for the relatives of the patient and include management of any uh, features suffering from the patient whether pain or others and regarding the pain we can use drugs uh, like morphine or non-opioid drugs like the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug and also we can use other measures like behavioral measures or physiotherapy also, there is anti-cancer intervention through specific measures like radiation therapy, which is a very important step for control of severe pain, for example, on bone metastasis. Also, radiofrequency ablation. Surgery is important when there is local pressure, increasing the size of the mass. Surgery play an important role in the management of severe pain. This figure showing the radiofrequency, radiofrequency ablation and for patients with cancer pain. So, 
As conclusion, cancer can be associated with somatic or neuropathic pain and can be acute, subacute, or chronic with attacks of breakthrough pain. Second point is treatment of cancer pain include drugs like opioids or non opioids or other measures like physical or behavioral methods. Now I want to assess your knowledge and this assessment only for of course undergraduate because this uh, lecture already for undergraduate patient, uh, sorry, students, and you can answer through the social media. First point, I want you to enumerate the members of pain project team. And second question is, what is the active metabolite of morphine? Third question is, I want you to enumerate two cytotoxic drugs associated with neuropathic pain. And fourth question is, what is the WHO ladder? pain ladder. All these informations are uh, taken from different references, mainly ASCO 6th edition and the Vita uh, 11th edition. Thank you very much.